Hey y'all, I'm Tim and I'm here at the Mr. Maple Open House. We're shooting some top fives and I'm here with Robert Phillips. Robert, how long have you been growing Japanese maples? I only got started within the last year or two, gardening in general, the whole thing. Well, yeah, where are you from? So I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I grew up in Georgia. And uh, so yeah, only about an hour, 45, two minutes, two hours away. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we, Columbia, South Carolina, we got all family down there. We grew up going down there to the Riverbank Zoo. Mm -hmm. We actually just shot a walkthrough recently going through the gardens there because they've got a lot of our maples there. They've had them for years. Sweet. Uh, it's a challenging place to grow Japanese maples with the high heat. Yes, that's right. I have to use my back deck because the sun goes over the top of the house so that the afternoon, you know, it doesn't all shrivel up and die. Hey, totally understand. So you've got a lot of Japanese maples in containers? I'm up to about 15. Nice. Something like that. Yeah, I started out with a Tamukiyama and uh, then I can't stop. And so here I am. <laughs> That's often people's gateway drug. Yeah. They get a red lace leaf, and they get a red upright. It's not happen. And then next thing you know, they've got 15 Japanese maples. Yeah, and today about six more. <laughs> so today, uh, Robert's going to tell us his top five Japanese maples. So we'll start out with number five. Five? Five. I have Orangiola. Orangiola. Started out with the Tamukiyama. Now I have an Orangiola, and I, it just leafed out. My first time seeing it, and it's beautiful. It's a classic. It is. It's a classic. What do you like about Orangiola? I think the color, the way it came out, you know, with orange and bronze and red and it's changing. I just like the habit, the way it weeps down. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's calm. I have it right outside my front door. I'm going to have to move it though because it's going to get too hot, I think. But anyhow, well, yeah, that's it. It is an amazing plant. I like it because it's got one of the most cascading habits of any of the lakes. So instead of this arching habit, it goes straight down. Mm-hmm. And because of it, it'll go straight down and sort of creep across the ground, creating almost like a little skirt at the bottom. Mm. But the colors on it are unreal. Yeah. yeah. And you just keep getting that orange red color popping across it yeah. time after time. I mean, it really is ever changing beauty on a lace leaf. So it yeah. gives you the red color, but it's, you know, you know, 50 different shades of red in there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. crazy all the different colors you get with it. And here's what's crazy. I'm colorblind. I'm red, green, colorblind. But when I was a kid, I was into painting, and now I'm into trees. And uh, I mix up the colors, but they still look pretty to me. So that's the color variations that you, that, that makes a lot of sense. So red and green, red and green are the two that I mix up. Yeah. But I can still tell them apart. I mean, I still think they're beautiful. So, yeah. That's crazy. Well, yeah. Orangiola was uh, a maple of the year with the North American Maple Society. Wow. It's quickly becoming one of our most popular red lace leaves. Okay. So it's no wonder it hits at your number five. There you go. Four. My, so number four, I have Shishigashira. That's a classic. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I love the way it looks like it has arms, like a paw, and it uh, it just calls your attention to it because it, it's it's just a different looking thing. I, actually, later you'll see I have other ones, similar similar reasons I picked that. But uh, anyway, yeah, the flower, uh, not, not the flowers, but the leaves, the way they look at the end, it just grabs my attention. I think it's awesome. The texture is the so texture. cool. Yeah. The way the leaves curl. I mean, it's one where we plant too many, but it's also one that performs well in high heat settings. Yeah. Oh. I've got a cousin who was living down in the Columbia, South Carolina area, and we used to do garden shows down there. Okay. And we planted a Shishigashira in her yard. She didn't take care of it. Full sun, the thing just thrives and does well. Wow. I mean, it can take a beating. It's a Japanese maple from the 1700s. Wow. So it's a classic. I mean, a true classic. If you like classic cars, that's really cool. If you like classic Japanese maples, Shishigashira is one of them. Good. I mean, it's one of the very first Japanese maples ever to be listed as like cultivars. Mm. And it's called the lion's head Japanese maple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's because it goes to yellow to oranges in the fall with that tuft appearance. Yeah. You it, know, I, I like it so much today. I picked up a Kurenai Jishi because I feel like it looks like it has a similar habit, but it's red, you know? And I'm into bonsai too, so I'm wondering what's going to happen with that. That that totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, the, I I think you're going to like it quite a bit. Good. Because the red line complements the shishigashira so well. Mm -hmm. Similar texture, but with that red color. Awesome. Can't wait. Three, number three, I listed, and this is, this is new to me, but it just leafed out, and I can't help it. I just look at it all the time. It's the geisha gone wild. Man. You guys listed that recently. I grabbed it, and I'm loving it. Geisha going wild, it is a crazy plant. Yeah. I mean, the variegation is spectacular with the pink and the pink. white. And then you get green on pink later and you get green on cream. 
but it has the color variation. You mm -hmm. can see the probably the differences in the colors. Mm -hmm. I can. Yeah. And I I, I I get it. For me, it's the, one of the pinkest trees out there in the landscape. Yeah. And it, for me, is one of the more heat tolerant of the red oh. variegated Japanese maples. Wow. Good. And the variegation stable. Uh, it's got a nice upright form. It was found as a cult of uh, a sport off the cultivar geisha. Mm -hmm. And so like, geisha is like this little short squatty thing that's super pink hmm. that, and it makes this nice little shrub, but geisha going wild is an improvement on it. I mean, it's an okay. upright tree with pink and red and it thrives and does well out in the landscape and garden. Yeah. So awesome plant for sure with geisha going wild. Selected by Talon Buckles. Okay. You know, we recently purchased oh, Buckles. I watched all your from. videos. Yeah. Seen them all, yeah. Two. Number two, I listed, and I just got this one too. I listed it, it's fantastic. Uh, number two for me is Firefly. Firefly, uh, it just started leafing out, again is brand new, but I've already been blown away and here we are, I'm wearing a hoodie. So it's just early on in the spring and it's just beautiful. So much color, the reticulation, the way the leaves kind of curl and open up, it, uh, it's mesmerizing to me. So I got it right by my back door, I walk out, Every time I take a cup of coffee, get a breath of fresh air, it's like the first thing I see. You're talking about a plant that's also just ever-changing in its beauty. I mean, when at least out in the spring, you get the purple nails mm -hmm. with like a ghost-like reticulated variegation in mm -hmm. the center of the leaf. The veins are prominently a different color than the rest of the foliage. Mm -hmm. And then all throughout the season, it just seems like it just keeps putting on a show mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Did you see the 15 gallons in House 27? No. You'll have to check them out later. Okay. If there's any left. We had a number of 15 gallons at the open house of the fire glow or the firefly uh outrageous plant yeah i mean we first got the plant and it was labeled moonfire and matt and i are looking at it like this ain't moonfire this is mislabeled and then eventually after we evaluated it and knew that it was different from all the other ghost series it impressed us so much i called the guy up and i said what's that moonfire and he said oh yeah yeah yeah. we we named it moonfire i'm like you know there's a moonfire it's in the nursery tree so oh, what kind of what name do you want to put on it and i said any chance we call it Firefly? And he said, yeah, let's go with it. That's awesome. And so we got to name it. And I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, we can't do enough of it because it's got a good, strong, upright form mm -hmm. and just constantly changing mm -hmm. on its colors. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, and I'm in Columbia and the Columbia Fireflies. That's our mascot, the baseball team. So I no. got Firefly. One. So I'm on to number one now, right? Yeah. So number one, the reason I got this is one is I had a lot to do. She didn't even know it is because of my daughter. We got a new house, moved into it. Her favorite color was pink. I painted her room. And when I started buying stuff for the garden, she didn't even know. I was trying to see if she'd figure it out. But uh, I got my, my, my number one on the list, which is the Japanese princess. And that one, I was, I was interested in bonsai and it came up as the first one I got from you guys. And it is, fantastic it's my favorite picture it's the one i share with everybody uh the the, the pink that it had uh when it started flushing out this spring it just blew my mind and uh it's just like it's and as it's the the layering and the shingling of the way the the uh, leaves are on there it's almost like it's twisting and just smiling at you you know that's what i feel like when i come out and see it and uh, so i love looking at it it's also right there on my deck Jack, japanese princess it's gotta have it i mean japanese princess another book telling book holds introduction one of our favorite introductions he ever produced. Uh, it's a plant that I love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the very first color variation on a Makawa type, but you're right. The way the leaf twists mm -hmm. adds so much to it. Yeah. I mean, it's got that layering shingling habit, but the twisting leaf with the pink color, it's like the icing on the cake. Yeah. I mean, you see it and you're just like, that thing is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I get why he named it Japanese princess. His wife, is actually from Japan. Oh, oh <laughs> so, wow, what a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, amazing, awesome little Japanese maple. And, you know, that fits in a lot of people's gardens, great for containers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that pink color in the on Japanese Princess in the spring, unreal. Yeah, hard to beat it. Well, I appreciate you jumping in today for today's top five. Y'all make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And as always, you know, if you're coming to these open houses, contact us. We'd love to shoot a top five with you as well. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.